Does that make sense? That's super frustrating when you're getting only half of the deals you're selling are going through and closing. Okay, you don't want to do that when you're making money off of what? Closings, it's super frustrating. That's why I liquidated my portfolio when I learned Dave's system five years ago and I jumped over to this side of the coin. Can somebody tell me how we evaluate, or, uh, evaluate multifamily properties? What is it determined by? What's that? Rent roll. Yeah, rent roll, which is your cash flow. Does that make sense? It's not based on your neighbor's asset next door on another apartment building. If you are doing a good job keeping your cash flow going up, what is happening to your value? It's going, it's going up. Does that make sense? If you're a horrible asset manager or slumlord and your cash flow is going down, what's happened to your value? Okay. It's going down. They're synonymous, right? I like this idea better because I have more control over my asset's value. It doesn't mean it's easier. There's still risk associated on both sides, correct? People don't pay rent on houses, correct? They also don't pay rent in apartment buildings from time to time as well. So know that there's always gonna be risk associated with either investment strategy. But what I wanna share with you is that I was willing to go out and do this because I had more control, okay? Has anybody ever made an offer based on a pro forma? Anybody heard the word pro forma? We never use pro formas to make our business decisions. Those are unicorns. They're sounding really, really good, but they're not true. It's if everything worked perfectly, nothing went wrong, and everything always goes wrong, okay? So we only invest on step number two when we use the performance of the assets. So here's what you need to write in your notes. In order to start step number two, you need to request, whether it's through an NDA or non-disclosure agreement, you must have that property manager, the landowner, or the broker send you the asset information, which is called an offering memorandum. The offering memorandum is the first thing you need to do in step number two. Once you have that offering memorandum, this will give you all the financial data you need necessary. That is the income and expense report. It is the profit and loss statement, all right? It is all the rent rolls. It gives you the ins and outs of that asset, the good, bad, and the ugly. It tells you who was evicted, how many people are paying late. It tells you all the expenses, all the vacancies, all the maintenance. It has to give you the, all the concrete information so you can analyze the deal effectively. Does that make sense? We base our value off of the performance, not somebody's pretty picture they're trying to tell us on how good it is, okay? That's not how we invest. So that's what we use in step number two. So once we do that, we're gonna follow through that program. Hey, congratulations, we'll see a boot camp. Congratulations for taking action. Here we go, this is the formula we're gonna use now. Income minus expenses equals NOI. So please write that down in your notes. Income minus expenses equals NOI. This is the first formula we use when we're determining valuation on multifamily properties. We have to get the offering memorandum in place and then we instantly plug it into this formula. The income is alluding to the rent, the late fees, the pet fees, the parking fees, everything on that opportunity is what we're talking about in that system, all right? Once we have all that income, we're gonna dive into the offering memorandum and we're gonna start pulling out all the expenses on that asset. Here are the five major expenses we are looking for. Taxes, insurance, property management fees, the vacancies, and maintenance. Those are the five critical items we've got to extract from the offering memorandum to plug into the formula. At this point in time, when analyzing the value of the deal, I don't care if there's a debt payment on the property or somebody has a loan or mortgage on that asset. Does that make sense? It's irrelevant in the cost of the valuation. I don't care if you're buying it in cash or with debt. We don't care about that expense at this point. So don't use that in the column because you're going to screw up the math. Okay? So once you have the income and you minus out those major expenses, that leaves you with the NOI, and NOI stands for what? Net operating, Net operating. Net operating income. Once you have the NOI, this is how we determine the approximate value or what we call strike price in this business. And here's the number. You take the NOI and you times it by an arbitrary factor number 10. This gives you the strike price of that asset or its approximate value. Is everybody clear? If I was to give you an offering memorandum, do you all feel confident you could go in and quickly grab the income, grab those expenses, and come up with your NOI? Yes or no? Because yeah. you all do the math. Because you then take that NOI and times it by 10. Yeah. Once you have that, you now know your strike price, and we can make an offer on that property. How many of y'all like that idea? Yeah. Do you see that in 15 minutes I've taught you a quick, easy strategy? You can analyze any size of a deal in this business and know if you're safe to make an offer. Is that pretty cool? Mm -hmm. Now, would you all like to walk through my very first deal I did five years ago when I went to the <laughs> training? Would you all like to see it? Don't laugh at me, it's only a 20 unit deal. I wish I could show you like a three, 400 unit deal and brag, but some of us didn't get a partnering bonus when we started, okay? So I had to kind of go out and hustle a smaller deal, but it still worked. Take a look at this deal. Here's my two story apartment building. Look at that beautiful building right there, you see it. It's a beautiful little brick building, two story, 20 units. Here's the offering memorandum details right there. 
The yearly income was ninety-two thousand seven hundred. The yearly expenses were fifty thousand three hundred. What that leave me is my NOI. Forty-two thousand four hundred. Is everybody clear on how we do the math? Income minus expenses equals NOI. If I want to quickly see if this asset was worth submitting an offer and considering it to buy, what do I need to quick, quickly times the NOI by? 10. Ten. And that gives me approximately $424,000. Is everybody clear? If the landowner was selling that building for more than the strike price at $424,000, is that a good deal, yes or no? No. Do you see why you need to walk away? Okay. We don't ever base it, even if they think it's worth more. No, we only base it off of performance of the asset. We don't ever pay more than the strike price in this business, okay? Now, if they were selling it for less than 424, is that a good deal, yes or no? Yes. We don't know, maybe. I'm trying to trick you, and here's why, okay? Just because it's below the strike price does not necessarily mean that it's a good deal. Do you understand that? But can I still be safe to tie it up with an offer? Yes. Yes, because I know where the strike price is based on its performance. I may not still like the idea, but I can still at least tie it up so if I walk away and do some further analysis, I don't miss out on an opportunity because I walked away. Okay? That's why we want to encourage you to start making offers off of strike price to tie up these deals because too many of you have been wanting to know all these further numbers here and then seeing if it really works and then going back and transacting. When you finally went back, what happened? It's gone. It's gone. So do you see how I want to keep you safe? Just because it's below the strike, we are safe always to make an offer immediately and that's what we're going to teach you. But we want to use our due diligence over the next 90, 120 days, whatever that is, to go out and determine if it's really going to be a good deal. We're going to transact it or we're going to walk away because it doesn't make sense for us. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to turn to your neighbor. I want you to say, I can do this. I, can do it. I want you to turn back to your neighbor and say, this is easy. <laughs> Did I not promise everybody in my room tonight before you left my class at the end of the day, you would all be 100% confident of analyzing big deals in the system? Did you see that that is the easiest way to do this? I don't care if it's a duplex, a 100 unit, 500 unit building. You get the offering memorandum, you pull out the income, minus out the expenses, and get your NOI. You times that by a factor of 10 and you get your what? Strike price. And once you know the strike, you can make an offer. Whether or not you decide to stick it out or walk away, that's up to you. Do you all like that it happened? You're welcome. All right? Okay. Now, here are the most three important ratios in the system. Once you have something tied up and under contract, we have some further work to be doing to see if it's a really good deal or not, or if we're gonna walk away or transact the deal. These are the three most critical numbers of everything you're gonna analyze. We call these our base qualifiers. If you wanna use our partnering bonus in our system, guess what qualifiers you need to meet? These three ratios. We're gonna talk about cap rate, cash on cash, and debt coverage. You can all look these up on definition.